problem that we're running into right now is that the curriculum is so packed with testing. Mm -hmm. And the tests are so, they're designed in such a way that all you can do is teach the test. Mm -hmm. You can't succeed and have passion and teach something outside of it. You've got to teach to this test. You've got to teach to this vocabulary. Because when I'm teaching some child negative numbers, okay, mm -hmm. and I come, they come to a problem where everything's not word problems, and they don't know the word descended, a fish descended five feet, for instance. I'm not saying that's an official question, but let's let's say it was. Um, then, <laughs> then suddenly it's no longer a math test, it's a vocabulary test. And that's part of the reason why I'm really glad to be working with the National Technology Council so that I can get back to what I love, which is teaching, instead of test um, I was at Cresswell, but I've been at, at West End for several years. And the way that I got started with this was through a ladies' hack day because I was raised traditional, which is how I ended up as a teacher. Because I probably would have been a Linux administrator by now. Love it. Love Linux. Love Python. Love programming. Um, but the ladies' hack day got me started. They did a Mother's Day card. And it was my fate because suddenly I wasn't scared of doing Mother's Day cards my whole life. And so, a little bit of HTML, I was scared of Python at that time, but because I went to that, I was invited to Hack, Hack National at that time. And I met Yahweh Ye, and I met Jason Myers, and I was the only teacher they knew. They wanted to bring a young coders conference to my school. So they came to school, they pulled me out of the classroom, they sat down with my principal, I thought, uh, oh. And then they told me what they were up to, and I trusted both of them, I said, yes, let's do this. And of course, my administrator being the typical administrator said no. And, uh, I have a friend that's been teaching in the state of Florida for a number of years now, somewhere around like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And during the course at one time, I don't know if it was the county or the state, city the county state, that introduced iPhones into the curriculum and told the teacher, I guess, handed them a lesson plan or something, and said, Here, you're going to teach you people how to use an iPhone. But they didn't provide for No. <laughs> That's typical. Yeah, that's, that's David's encounter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a textbook that we're supposed to be using online, and the kids don't have one one computers. It says they have one one computers, yeah, but fact, the, the, a bunch of ours are broke. So. They, without specifying or announcing evidently in any way, in any formal way, uh, well, how are these kids going to use the internet? You have internet in the lesson plan. How are we going to get to the internet? That's, yeah, that's so. some of the things that we're working on, which is why the National Technology Council is going to be so important in the, in the equation right now. Because they're partnering with all of these different companies to bring tech to underserved populations of, you know, black women and, and you know, our, our poverty populations. I have children this year that have never had a computer in their home. I have kids that come to me every year, and I just embed technology because I love technology. But every year, tw uh, 12 year olds that don't know where the address bar is. It's, it's like not knowing how to tie your shoes. It, it is the literacy of the 21st century. Uh, you said you didn't have one to one computers. I know a lot of computer stores in Nashville, like they had old inventory they tried to get rid of, and they were trying to find schools to come pick it up just so they could donate it, but nobody would call them back. Yes, because uh, Metro and, and other school systems would have this list of things that they will only accept but the computers in the schools are 10 years old. It's very strange. Okay, so that's probably what needs to be edited out too. <laughs> well, um, I make a note here, you need to see the, uh, the cut and suggest edits before we put it online. Thank you. Um, but I would be interested, see, as the, this is the beauty of, of what I've moved into because of the, Nash, the Ladies Hack Day, the National Day of Civic Hacking, Yahweh Day, we could eventually get a yes. It took me being persistent and meeting um, someone at Pi Tennessee, Lindsay Simon, who said, you don't have to take no. It's the first time, I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me, I don't have to take no. I just, you know, pulled together the funding, brought it to them. no. I pulled together more funding, and then I said, I'll have it on the last week of school. You all are running videos anyway. If you don't do this, I'm going to put it in my blog. And then I got a, maybe you could talk to our leadership committee. Okay, let's do that. I got a yes. You know, so um, I've learned to be persistent, and I've built the skill set, such as it is. It's very much patchwork quilt. It is. But, you know, my son is testimony that I'm doing something right, because we're learning this together. 
So, um, but yes, I would love to have computers. I would love to get them in the hands of kids that are in poverty. We have to be careful because if the computers are new enough that they can pawn them or sell them, then it's not very good. We really need older computers for yeah. that batch. And they, they've got computers they want to get rid of because they're sitting on the shelf and they know no one's going to buy them and they just want to write them off their taxes. I love that. National Technology Council, please. Um, I get their yeah, email all the time. Okay. I've been a member of them for years. They can't have those. Well, they can maybe stuff up the case and the enclosures a little bit and make them look. Yeah, you can all on the table. <laughs> just get a table that you want to throw away and epoxy all the cases. <laughs> I was saying just scuff up the case and the uh, uh, enclosure around the, the actual monitor frame and just you know, kind of scuff them up, make them look, look a little bit scuffy, still work fine. I've got some old CRTs that are taking up room. Use pawn and, and nobody's going to be able to lift them anyway. <laughs> well, I want them to be, they've got to be poor. Okay. Because you've got to understand, our children that, 77% of the kids in Metro, in, in national public schools, are living in poverty. And until you've walked in that situation, it's hard to picture it. We've got children whose mothers are working the second shift. And so I have a little boy who's sleeping through my class every day, and I said, Carly, why are you sleeping through my class every day? Because he was living in a dangerous area, and he was in charge of making sure everybody stayed safe, and he was up until 2 in the morning guarding his house. And so <laughs> the kind of things that these kids are dealing with, yeah. there has to be pathways out, or they're just going to repeat it. That's why, to me, technology is so dear to my heart, because I believe that if I can give them the skills that you all know, then we can make pathways for these kids so they never have to leave their babies at home while they're working second shift. What's wrong with raspberry pies? There's nothing wrong with raspberry pies they can except. Be <laughs> well, not that they can be pawned easily. Metro doesn't want raspberry pies. Because? Because they have a certain list of things that they want, and I do not defend them. Okay. I know some people that are on the school board now, or they were, they might have retired since, but. Uh, one of my favorite English teachers actually went on to the school board. And Jill Spearing? No, um, we're, we're talking about Davidson County? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll we'll talk, we can talk yeah. about it. <laughs> I've got notes I don't want to here. Uh, put anybody on the spot. Yeah. No, I've got notes here, and he needs final cut approval before talk goes online. So okay. say whatever you want, and then she'll decide what needs to be edited out. I don't understand this. Uh, the uh, Davidson County School Board has a list of computers that they accept or don't yes. accept. Yes, they they have a very limited set of things that they'll accept as donations. Oh, okay. like you great computers and stuff like that. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. Actually, I don't think they Did, take a credit. It's not a deal. Well, I'm just joking. <laughs> Can you submit something for approval? Oh, you could, yes. Okay, great. But I'm much happier to be working for the National Technology Council full time so that I don't have to get their approval anymore. I can use a Raspberry Pi lab. The problem with a Raspberry Pi lab with poverty populations, and I, see, when I got to do the Young Coders Conference, I used a Pi lab. My, my principal initially told me, you can't do that because our old school can't support the electricity. What? For a yeah. Raspberry Pi? Yes, and so I was invited to a Young Coders so conference, panel, coded yeah. all day, <laughs> and then at the end of it they said, okay, unplug your computer. And I said, what Where? do you mean? There's no, they said that. The, this? This is a credit card. <laughs> and, and it was amazing. And I, and I realized we can plug these into the lab that they already have freestanding. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And power everybody around the table at once. Oh, and then you have, to, you have to have yeah, know-how. No, you have to have seen someone do that. I was coming from around nothing. Right. But uh, you know, well, when, I was, you, when I was invited to the Young Coders Conference, then I was able to see that this could be plugged into our lab, and that was the, the last piece that I needed to get him to tip over enough to say yes. And so I got the yes, and they said, yes, you can have a Young Coders Conference here and give away computers. So I did that, but here's the problem. I had a child come to me, and he said, I want to plug this up to my TV at home. I want this to work. I don't have a, a, a keyboard. And I said, OK, Damien. I'm going to go home and see if I can find the keyboard. And the only thing that I have is one of those old purple, really kind of almost frilly keyboards from the apples. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. Pastel. And I went, oh, he's a tough boy. He's going to be mad at me handing this to him. <laughs> that child took that keyboard and did this. And I went, oh. And then I had two kids come to me and ask me for more, and I couldn't. 
And so you have to have all these extras in order to get a Raspberry Pi to work in their house. They have to have a cable connected to the TV. They have to have a keyboard. They have to have a mouse. They have to be able to plug into the wall. And they don't have internet at home. So that's why a laptop is a better solution, even though you're going to be exposing them to fast food, which is not ideal. You know, most of the places that have free Wi-Fi, you're looking at, you know, crystals, McDonald's, and it's not great. That's why I'm hoping that Google, you know, Google has some initiatives that they want to bring in internet into these populations. And that's going to be amazing. It's something else I'm going to help with with the technology council. I found, uh, I've actually got one on order right now. I can't remember the name of the, the website, but they will give you free internet or a free phone, and you have up to, I think it's one gig for free, and after that they'll charge you, you know, like so many cents for like another meg or whatever. But it's like 30 bucks to get this box and it plugs in to your laptop. If you want to pay 99 bucks, you can get one that will power 10 laptops, or you can pay 30 bucks for the one that only does eight laptops. So much better deal, you pay 30 bucks up front and then you get so much a month for free you can have eight people connected to it. I like the idea. But you Maybe can pass out the I literature can, to I the people that want that. internet at home mm -hmm. and they can just order it, have it sent directly to their house. 30 bucks, a one-time fee to have internet for their kids. Would you email and that to me? Yes, I just gotta remember the name of it. <laughs> okay, well when you do, when you do. The, um, uh, what happened to one left child? Per child. Well, here. the first laptops they, they brought, they bought us were were netbooks. Mm -hmm. Net, they're slow as Christmas. They are awful, and they, 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 so we've got all these broken down laptops that don't work. So well, we have one to one, but you know, does it really count when it doesn't function? Um, but yeah, there was an initiative to bring cheap laptops to kids. <laughs> I, I don't know why that was never that never caught on here. I don't know the specs on those, so I can't speak to it. I, I tried to get one myself, but they wanted me to buy five others or four others, something yeah. like that, before I could get one for myself. Well, I really look. wanted two, one for myself, one to give away to somebody, and I just kind of like I couldn't afford that. At yeah, first, time. they had the give one get one yep. thing, mm -hmm. and though the actual first model of those had a hand crank on. Yes. And the hand crank, you could turn and it would power it, so you didn't have to plug it anywhere. Right. And the school system couldn't complain that their electricity was being drained and the power was going up. Plus, you could say the kids were getting physical education. <laughs> <laughs> Such a That's your memo to yourself about Thank you. <laughs> oh, what was that? It, I don't trust the Wi-Fi here, but if somebody has like a cellular, <laughs> if you could look up like uh, free internet, free cell phone. It's one of the ones that's at the top of the, of the search list right now. I think there's an L in it. The website used to be purple, but it's changed, so I can't tell people look for the purple one now. But right. <laughs> well, go ahead and start that to yourself then. Start I'm, I'm about to. Yeah, yeah. But um, one of the pathways is by reaching teachers like they did with me. Uh, you reach, or, or you know, parents, that also helps. But for the teacher, you're going to hit more kids. If you can have things like the ladies' hack day, which made it accessible because I was terrified to walk into that beforehand. That opened the door and then I was okay to go to the hacks. I didn't feel like I belonged at the first hack, but I was there anyway and I got so enthused because somebody was building a server out of Raspberry Pis and wiring it out to a solar cell in the parking lot. And I remember seeing that and it just it, it just made me so happy suddenly I just didn't care that I wasn't really supposed to be there. And then, you know, I've been invited to other hacks and National Day of Civic Hacking, and, and so all of these things open doors for me, and then I ran into Jason Orendorf. Do you know him? <clears throat> He's from, with the Mozilla Corporation, mm -hmm. and he uh, hosted Click, and he spoke a lot of the, the language that the districts need in order to open, open doors for you. He used the word workshop. Um, one of the ways that he was able to get teachers in was he was willing to feed them, but he contacted Metro, we don't get fed, they don't do that with us, they don't give us freebies. Um, but he contacted Metro and he said, we'd like to send out this email and invite all of these teachers. And um, Metro laughed at him, they said, you're not paying them, you're not giving them any CE credits. He said, we're giving them lunch, and they, but they sent the email anyway. And he ended up with 50 teachers that volunteered to be there. Do you have your email address? Oh, yeah, he does. Uh, it's 50 teachers that volunteered to come 
for this Saturday, and, and Saturdays are precious. There's so much now to do. We're giving 55 to 60 hours a week to make it work in some of the inner city schools. Mm -hmm. But they had also 50 programmers to sit beside them while they worked from scratch. And it was amazing. And so one of the ways that you can reach teachers is by having workshops, by using, if you can partner with someone like PET or MNEA and offer CE credits, that would help. But um, those teachers are only one pathway. There's other pathways to reach kids. And one of them would be the initiatives of the National Technology Council. STEM Scouts is trying to get started here. We're not having a lot of success because uh, they need to find people who are qualified to teach it. 2600, their initiative, we had a packed house today. Many more people came to that workshop than to this, which is fine, you know, but um, it was amazing. It was an amazing outreach. So there are ways we can reach kids. Of course, most of the kids that are there probably would pick it up anyway because their parents are in this community. It's the kids that aren't going to have the exposure that I'd really love for us to figure out how to get to. And it can be done. It's just probably going to have to be outside of the regular classroom. We've got some people that will do one hour code, but one hour, hour out of a year is just not the same thing as getting to come to something like this. Well, one of the things I've been griping about for a couple of years now is that um, we have to kind of undo some of the damage that was done in the previous years in terms of culture. I think we've done that, or we're starting to, with both the um, National 2600 nonprofit and the convention. Um, next, we need to focus on bringing the sponsors back. Then we can drop or eliminate would be my preference, the mandatory admission that you go back to being a free donation to come again, it's corporate sponsor, <coughs> and do smaller events throughout the year. Yes. Um, we don't, you know, we can get a room like this for a weekend, and have it open 24 hours a day, a few people to staff it, um, rent a hotel room, and I had suggested that almost two years ago, and been saying we should do this. I've seen it work with other conventions. I've seen it work in other places. One of our staffers also works for Hypericon. He took it to Hypericon. They acted on the idea, and they were able to free fund a lot of um, um, their convention expenses and keep attention and buzz going for their sci-fi convention simply by doing regular, smaller events throughout the year. Absolutely. So, so I think that it's a really good idea. I've got an idea I want to put forward on the table. Uh, that would be a, a mobile teaching library. There is one. Yeah, and, and, and it, what it would do, tie in with schools and teachers, and you give them name and address and telephone number if they've got that, and then they can go with that mobile truck maybe once a week and teach the kid there how to do computing. Uh, we, there is a, a teacher that had written a grant, and she has that. Of course, you know, going to the schools, there's really not time in the curriculum to allow for, for very much of that. And so, you know, a teacher has to get pretty creative. You have to find ways to I don't to understand what you said. Okay. Um, because of all the testing initiatives, yeah. the curriculum has been narrowed, yeah. and the teaching, professional teaching, has been, they're trying to limit it down so that they can hire some of the type of people who work a regular, like maybe even fast food job, and then they give them a script and they just go over it. The, the, the real, real teaching, real professional teaching is going away as a profession right now. I'm hoping it revives. Yeah, the, when you say a hire. You must have left the no. part out about the heavy test reliance. That, that's what he that's the problem. Yeah. That's what he missed. He missed her statement about the test. Yeah, line. the deal is, is if, if one is a true teacher, you don't have to be hired to teach. Oh, of You'll course. go out and teach anyways. You'll teach anywhere. So what I'm yes, saying and, is and that if you're, you're in an, huh? if you're in an environment where you're not permitted to teach, mm. well, that's then you go story. and you find some place that you can. Right. See, but. In a case like this, you know, the curriculum for the school, I'm saying, no, that's not part of the curriculum in the school. That's after school. It would have to be. You know, well, and and the then, only way and to then teach, it wouldn't really. be partnering with Metro. You probably need to partner with the Parks Department. 
Yeah. They do several after school programs that could be, you could go to some of the community centers. Metro schools yeah, public that, libraries. That gig. Oh yeah, the public libraries would be another good thing. Uh, National Public Library has some initiatives right now. They're calling it a maker space, but it's not because they won't let me come. I'm, not, I'm over 18. I think we need a maker space for Nashville. That's something that, um, I don't know if you all know about this. This isn't even part of my speech, but Make Nashville uh, is going to create a maker space. If you give $100, then you're considered a founder. When they have 40 people, and I, last time I checked, they had 35. When they have 40 people, they have a donor that's going to match dollar for dollar. Well, do they have so, a monthly dues or yearly dues as well? Not or? yet, no. No, it's just you give 100 bucks and you're in. Make Nashville. Yes, they do have a site. Okay. No, I mean, do they have a physical location for the, the makerspace? No, um, but I ran into them last weekend at GMX, mm -hmm. and I told them about, um, this has kind of been my, my bailiwick, um, Midwest Library, which they're supposed to, they have a land agreement where the guy gave them the land 100 years ago with the agreement that it would always be a library. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find some way to break that agreement. If, they, if it's not a library, it's supposed to revert to the family, but they're looking at ways to, to get around that and just keep the land several million dollars. Of course they are. But it would be a great place for a makerspace. Uh, you know, I love well, the makerspace has a library. You know, a learning library. I think so. A digital yeah. learning library. Yes. Well, yeah. and not just digital. You know, I, I'm dying to see us well, have, have mother-daughter arc welding. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> So woodworking, pottery, all of those crafts, you know, in, in digital, all of it goes together. Where is this one books? Where is this space physically located? The Ben West Library is okay. Trying to, it's it's close. It's off of Church, and it's it's this building that that looks very 1960s ish. It's it's got these these spires that run up on the side of it. And the white. Yes, yes. I think there's a Foreign Legion building in front of it. Is that, is that right? I think so. It's been a long season. So it's close to the Capitol. It would just make my heart sing to see it become a, a real makerspace. A great city has a great makerspace. That, yeah, that'll take a lot of um, tax breaks, corporate government funding, too. Um, part of the reason we're in Murfreesboro again this year, the convention is for price out of Nashville. Yes. Uh, property rates have gone up. In the, price of doing business in, um, in the area has gotten so high. The hotel, uh, Days in the Stadium, where the convention has been held more times than any other, got completely renovated. The assistant manager there tried everything to get us back in. Would love to have had us. The best deal he could get from the owners was $275 a night for a living. Yeah. And it's just because they're so close to the stadium and everything else has gotten so expensive. Um, and Skydog Cotton has been priced out of Nashville too. So, so it depends on my too. <laughs> Not enough room. But yeah, to be in, have a, an open maker space in downtown Nashville, that's, that's we're going to have to have government cooperation with that as well. well um, and especially so we have a new, we have a brand new administration. So this would be a good time. I, I started. Uh, some sort of thing where people can sign up to, and I got a call from the mayor's office. Why have you started this this sign signing campaign? We, you know, because I they're they're friends of mine, but at the same time it's kind of a don't do that. So they're gone though. So now Megan Barry's in. So I don't see any reason why we couldn't push. She might very much agree that we need a maker space, which we do. One problem I can see in the location. Um, during the last talk, the, the young guy that did the rapid prototyping built his own small fusion reactor. And if somebody builds that right down the street from the state <laughs> capitol, <laughs> not, not hard. All, all they're going to hear is nuclear and freak yeah. out. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, this is hackers. one of the things that you learn from a classroom. Right? Right. Set up parameters and you make them public. No nuclear reactions, and everybody will <laughs> laugh, but at the same time, no, not here. Everybody wants yeah. Nashville to make a start. Because, <laughs> because we're going to yeah. make it a successful thing and being that close to the well, Yeah, not initially, but yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be a great teaching opportunity, too. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about the difference between this is how you vision make a start. and vision. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I don't have an objection to it. I just want to, to also make something that's practical, successful, and sustainable. Is there a website I could go to that tells me all these places that have needs, like the maker? Uh, uh, not whatever. yet, but that's something that as 
the National Technology Council is pulling together. You Start can study with. that in the next six months. So you should teach math right now? No, that's what I'm telling you. Oh. I left a week ago. Oh, okay. You National left Technology Council. That's another alternative. Um, I know the um, old Hebrew Hall of Mall got turned into uh, National State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They use the entire facility. Is there any space there? How would a, 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 a national state college feel about having a, a maker space on site? I would think the engineering and science people. Would I talked to that straight down to care. Tennessee Tech could purpose of people going to Gallatin. They actually have classes at McGavick High School. Mm -hmm. McGavick High School has a um, machine shop. Oh yes, but would they let us use it? Because I had to jump. Possible, I had to jump through so many hoops just to be able to use the wood shop at Cone. What was the uh, objection? Well, insurance. Oh, well, you know, okay, so so my team was 10 to 14-year-olds, and you're talking about a wood shop. But that was what our robot was built on for 2013. It was built on machines from 1952. Um, every girl learned to use the drill press. Everyone, I had them freak out, no, use the easy machine. Learn it. You know, but you know, we had several kids that were using the, the lathes and the saws, and it was frightening. Their parents had to be there. Their parents had to sign a waiver if this like child, this. <laughs> yes, if this child cuts off a finger. And you know, I went over very carefully all those rules. But just being able to get permission to come in there and use that took a lot of hoops and a lot of yeah. charm. And, um, a lot of objections to overcoming it from always, just, yeah. always. That's why we need a makerspace. We don't need to be. We don't need a makerspace. We need a, an army of lawyers. <laughs> no, we don't want to play their game. It's, yeah, it's time to create a different game. Yeah, I know. That's, it's I time to do something different. You got to have a long call. It's just a, have a long call. Have but a long call. No. Are we talking about a nonprofit makerspace? Yes. That's something that okay then uh, sort of for nonprofit management would be something good to join. It took two years of screaming when I finally got National 2600 to shell out the $75 to join. And we got our first um, audit of the books from an actual accountant. Um, still haven't got the lawyer on the call yet, but I'm working on that. I know a lawyer in Nashville. Um, he's actually also a night court judge and has talked about just moving on to something simpler. So I'll uh, give you some information. I love that. You know, uh, computing is, uh, uh, in the legal profession, is getting to be is very much accepted. And I'll give you an example. When I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, that county down there, uh, they, I forget the name of the county now, but I had a friend of mine, uh, Paul Dyer, uh, who was a programmer and started off at NSA years back before they hit the big news stuff. He was really good. What he did is he started the development of taking the uh, juvenile uh, court records, putting them on computers, so that not only the records, but the juvenile law on computers at the same time. So that when a juvenile child came into the courtroom, the judge would sit there with a terminal right in front of him and press a few keys and he'd tell the the background of that child and what laws pertain to that particular offense he's charged with. Mm -hmm. And that's been, as far as I know, that's still being run there. He yeah, had to give up on it because too much work and some doctor took over and I think finished the project. That's, that's one, one way to intersect children with technology, but not the one that I'm particularly interested in. My, well, my, my, special, my special interest is in seeing the kids have pathways. There's three block roadblocks right now. One of them is a lack of technology but you all give me some resources and I'm interested in being introduced to other people. And you know, let's pull some things together and get kids the laptops they need. The second one is that there is a, a lack of pathways. And, you know, the things that my children have gotten to do, they've gotten to do because I am able to do this. If I were working 60 hours a week, like I was when I was in an inner city school for the last month and a half, it was really eye-opening. There wouldn't have been time. You know, and so there has to be some way to give these kids this opportunity without necessarily having to have mom and dad along. That gets complicated, which is why we're probably looking at an after-school program. Um, lack of resources, lack of time, and the other one was, well, we need we need people to share to share this information. We need teachers. Um, That's the website you're talking about. Like, like 
then should be able to go to that website and get that information. Yes. So that third thing really should be completed when you do your website. Yeah, pulling together all those volunteers and getting people who are especially able to manage children. Because it's a, it's really is a different skill set. You know, I walked in and Ben was, was, was trying to share information and the kids were doing what they did. <laughs> and I said, you can hear my voice clap once. You can hear my voice clap twice. You don't be listening to me clap three times. Everybody's eyes were on me. I know these little tricks from 15 years. I know how to stand to hold myself so that everybody listens. I know how to make my voice go down, sit down, and suddenly a kid sits down. And you know, sometimes you have populations that need that, and then you have to gauge what type of population am I dealing with? Is, is, is it one that I have to do that with, or is it one that's going to go home and cry to their mom? That I'm so mean. I do that. So you know, 15 years of experience does weigh in for something. So pulling those resources together. Of course, you know, there are plenty of teachers now that have left the profession. So we just need to figure out how to tap those, too. But um, any other questions for me about bringing technology to underserved populations? Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell you. One of the things that I found when I was working with my, my little young coders group for that one day, my inner city children had a hard time staying with me and got discouraged. They, I could see them suffer from imposter syndrome. I could see them want to shut down. I want to leave this way. Well, hang on, we're going to have a snack. Hmm? It's when they feel, when, when you feel like you don't belong. You know, you walk into a room, and let's, okay, let's say you grew up in poverty. Okay, this happened to me. I grew up, um, not poverty, but, you know, almost low middle class. You know, we, we weren't rich by any stretch of the imagination. And then, you know, you get older and you go into a fancy restaurant and you have this momentary feeling of, oh, Everyone's looking at <laughs> am I going to use the right fork? Do I know what I'm doing? Do I belong here? They know I don't belong here. What are they going to do? And these children are experiencing this, but they don't have what an adult has. We have all these tools in our toolbox to be able to go, okay. How do you overcome Take a deep that? breath. Well, the way that you overcome it is you come alongside that child. And so I gave extra support to those students that I saw were struggling. I've sent my volunteers, make sure that you pay special attention to Keisha. Keisha's having a hard time. Make sure she's on the right line with us. Tell her she's doing a good job. She needs that today. And then what I do is I gave regular breaks. So we took a snack break. Snack break. Then we came back into it. Let's do this. Y'all are doing great. Lots of cheerleading. We took a lunch break. How's it going? I'm so proud of you for hanging in there. Don't leave us yet. If you stay, stick with us, you get a bag of goodies and you get the computer. No, I can't give you the computer if you leave right now. I know, you've worked so hard. I wish I could, but we have an agreement. We're going to make it through this day. Okay? And then they come in and I say, okay, we've done this for an hour. You're doing well. You're doing so well. Let's make some throwies. Let's do some <laughs> circuit bending. So regular breaks, no more than an hour at a time. And some of these populations may not even need an all day thing. And then there has to be an incentive at the end. You make it to here and you get this. Mm -hmm. How about transportation to the facility? Well, mine was during the school day at the end of the year when everybody else was, you know, yeah. you get to the end of the year, then you could probably bring things in the, into the schools, yes. So. That might be one outlet I didn't think, think of. Well, if you're going to do like that mobile truck, you would need uh, mm -hmm. you, you may need transportation to the truck sometimes, possibly. For instance, when you have rural kids, uh, you know, if the truck can't go out to a rural area, uh, then it may be best to bring the kid to a truck. And sometimes if you get one or two kids together at one time, they teach each other. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, and it's even better for them. You know, you know? It's, it's figuring out what, it's, it's finding the kids in, in those populations that are able to absorb it. That's, and that's share the absorption. Be, that's going to be the, the part that I'm still puzzling, puzzling out about. Um, working with Ben, he's going to help me set up an intranet. So that way, you know, in the last class that I taught this summer, I taught a group. They pulled the teacher that could do it or said, come on, we're going to take you to Murfreesboro and have you do this. And um, I had kids looking up Nicki Minaj videos and murders and, uh, okay. For transportation, you could reach out to like cab companies that accept Access Ride because Access Ride, for some people, Tim Care pays for it. 
Sometimes it's not to a doctor's appointment. They just need to go to the store or to the pharmacy, and they actually accept a dollar fifty from these people for transportation to the store and then back home. Right, getting mom and dad to give up a dollar fifty. Well, I'm, I'm serious. You know, I'm I mean, that could be, I mean, but that could be donation based. Some people want to help out the other kids. Yes. And they don't have just sometimes one car. They send like a bus, and sometimes it's a handicap bus, and you can fit 15 people on it. That would be wonderful. So, I mean, just reach out to cab companies and ask them, you know, if they're participating in Access Ride, and ask them if they're open to something slightly different. That's a good idea. If I a like person it. can't pay, can't pay dollars and cents, they can pay with the receipt, which is a tax deductible to the cab company. I like that. Uh, the kids may not keep up with them. We can keep a list. There's a way to, there's a way to, rent to figure yeah. it out, but I appreciate it. But the internet idea, intranet, is going to make it a lot easier. I'll have one computer and I'm able to see what everyone else is doing. So I'm working on building that new skill set. It's been funny. It's led, one skill set's led to another, led to another, led to another. But Kimberly will be here later talking about Blockspot, which is another initiative that I'm involved in, which is teaching kids tech specifically related to robotics or Arduino things like that. But any other questions for me? Yeah, who are you again from where? <laughs> I'm Amy Flatt. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I work for the Nashville Technology Council. And that is part of the... It is its own thing. It's sort of like the Chamber of Commerce. But they've decided to get into helping underserved populations, getting these skills, because we do not have enough uh, technically savvy people. We have people moving into the area that need technicians and they're bringing them from out of state, yeah, which is heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, I don't know. My son just got a master's and he's he's got some other courses in the program. He can't find a good job to fit Well, maybe you may need to come to, to Nashville. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he lives right on the outskirts here in Harrisonville. where he moved from. I found it distressing. It's the same situation I ran into. I got a degree in industrial engineering. I couldn't find a job for a couple of years. You know, <laughs> they just weren't using industrial engineers. And they were getting a lot of them that were coming from, from Europe or someplace like that. We were going to work for $15 an hour instead of 10 <laughs> But uh, it, it's very distressing. You see, when I see people in high places saying, oh, we need to increase the number of engineers we're producing. Yeah, what are you going to do with it? What you got? Uh, right? Yeah, and that, that's another thing the council does is it connects people. So, and I love that. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you may think also, in, in as far as teaching people about computers and programming and things like that, how about getting those kids interested from the viewpoint of a company like, uh, uh, not DEC, but uh, this is... Uh, Dell? Yeah, Dell, out here in Murfreesboro or someplace up north, to bring some kids in there who are pretty sh smart. Most kids are pretty smart anyway. That's what I'm finding. Yeah, and bring some them there and have show them what it looks learn. like. Yeah. And, and make it a, a, a monthly tour of Dell. Take three students every time, you know? At the end of one year, you got 36 students oh. going through the route. 36 students, though, and you're looking at 90,000. Mm. Well, you know, that's a for instance in numbers. I know, but I'm just saying. Just do that's that. A, you, you know, know you get, we, we've got we to find a way to reach as many as we can in as so little time as we can. Plug in yeah. about 1,500 times. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, um, what I, what I'm, my job is to train other teachers and other people. So I can take the things that I've learned about classroom management and tech and share them with a person who's maybe not taught, pair them with a teacher, someone who has, and then send them out to do these workshops with kids. So my, my goal is really, my, my position is not so much going out and doing the workshops as it will be providing training and connecting resources and creating programs and curriculum. Yesterday we were talking about um, the, the guy that just did the, the demo on the, my brain is right now, sorry. That's <laughs> all right. The, the rapid prototyping. Oh, yes. Down. He talked about the program he was in school where they took the top 2% of students and sent them on to like further education in like technology. And I was thinking they should take the top 2% and the bottom 2%, yeah, right. match them up. And so they would have somebody to look up to. It's like 
these people okay. down here is like, I'm not good at school. I don't know how to do this. I don't but know how to do okay, that. There's a problem with that. But you think that would work, but in studies it doesn't. What happens when you take your top and you match it with your bottom, your top get really frustrated with your bottom, and then they tend to actually make things worse for the bottom. Well, when that's we pair where this people up, it's better to pair up a middle with the top and a middle with the bottom. So if you can take a top and have work with the middle, and then have a middle and have them work with the bottom. Right. But what do you do with the ones what? that are at the bottom and over the whole line at the top? That's the what ones we're, those are the ones I want to find. Because that's, they're fed up. That's, that's the ones that, that's it. That that's the ones me. we want so badly to reach. And if you have ideas, I'm open to ideas of figuring out how to find those kids. Those are the ones I want to find. What I wanted to do with those, the top and bottom that I've paired up, the really, really good. The good, the, the ones that have achieved a lot and know what they're doing and have plenty of free time because they don't have to study. And the ones that, you know, I just want to go home, I don't want to be here, I'll just play video games with my friends. You put those two together, and Alonco was talking about the game slam. Yes. Where people get together and it's just like, okay, you know, 24 hours, we're going to build a video game top to bottom. Those you get the kids games. that's like, I, I want a game that does this, I want a game, I want to do this, and this, and this. You put them together with the people that can make it, and it's like, Show me how you did that. that you give them well. interest, and that brings those kids up to the middle. Okay, so you're talking, the middle what kids. you're talking about is skill. You're not necessarily, see, when I when you said that, you said high, and I was thinking IQ. And when yeah, we no, pair no, no, no. our geniuses about, with our, it's no. disastrous. They get no, so many. Don't trust the IQ test. Because no. That, that's, no. Don't trust the IQ test at all. Like well, I don't, but, I'm, but you know, there's some things that are just part of education. You have to have a basic not skills. But yeah, the, yeah. the people that are overachieving, the people that are underachieving, you, you put those together and give them a common interest like creating the game, and it's like, okay, this is something I want to do. It gets them interested, and when the project's over, they've got something else to reach for. They know that I did this. You know, Absolutely. I needed some help, but I, I now he showed me where to go on YouTube, and I learned this, and I learned that, and they're passing the kids in the middle at this point. And the kids at the middle are like, hey, when can I learn? And by the time somebody else passes them, then the middle kids before, they're like, hey, when? Well, they're on the bottom now, and now it's their turn. Yes. He's talking about a mentoring program. And then, and then the question is, how do you figure out who's at the bottom? You know, if you're Very you look at you look at grades right and you look at teachers. Let's see. All teachers know that there's a student in their class. It doesn't have to be the top two percent. You can just hand pick them. It's like this person got low test scores, but I hear them talking in the hallways. I know they're intelligent, but they're not interested in what we're doing. What we have to do is give them an interest and find another student. So many of them are interested in that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. They're not interested in what? That they know the they can't it's, fail. It's, so they don't it's have the way that they're them. teaching. It's I think that's why we're sitting here, because yeah, none of us are interested in the way right. things are being taught. We can continue this outside, but yeah, two more minutes later, we got a half hour. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank That's you all the so hour. much for the time. Oh, I want to know.